I usually go carbon neutral because in a certain sense, it is the lowest hanging fruit of an obligation, in my opinion, because um, it's not it's not saying, you know, you, you have to be carbon free. No, it's saying that you have to do as much as you can to reduce your emissions. And then because of the obligation you made, you have to invest into the sustainable future that our students need. You know, our university is is literally pumping out like something like 12,000 students every year graduating into the world. And they're investing in a future that, you know, is destructive for those students. They're, they're, they're investing in the problems, not investing in solutions. I think that it's very important that academic institutions such as IU that are so reputable and have such a, you know, high standing in the academic world are part of the solution. And I think that that carbon neutrality encompasses that vision so, so well. And it's very attainable, like I said, very, um, it's, it's a very open platform. There's many, many ways to achieve carbon neutrality. Um, and it, it gives many different uh, seats at the table. You know, it, it requires many different minds to, you know, reduce emissions in this area and then, uh, you know, change energy sources you know, over here and then use the, the political minds to lobby Indiana government. Um, there's so many different ways that, that this can be implemented. And I think that um, if IU were to go this route, it would really show true leadership among a very competitive environment for uh, schools. Like I, I know they compete a lot with University of Michigan and Purdue. Um, this, I mean, this this would really, especially with all the bad press IU has been having, um, it's, it's a sense of powerful message, which I think is important.